We can't be over aggressive. You know, we can all say what I'd like to do. I think what's attainable and can be done is to do this 10% income tax cut. Um, and I really looked at the waste in the budget. And if you look at, now the other candidates on my side are repeating what I say, but if you look at my plan, I've been saying this for a year now. I've already uncovered waste in the budget uh, from federal audits. And I'm not talking about one-time waste. I'm talking about repeat waste uh, that has happened. And, uh, and, and also the, our internal audits from Department of Legislative Services. Now keep in mind, Department of Legislative Service also often does a uh, random 5% audit. Random meaning like spin the roulette wheel, it points to this part of this agency, just that 5%, and they're finding waste. Imagine if we really do this. So I want to do independent audits of all the agencies. My tax cut plan, right out of the gate, is to do that 10% income tax cut, retroactive on 2014 taxes. So we inject, this is a true stimulus, money into people's pockets by April of next year. People have more discretionary money. That's how you turn the economy around. And it has to be money locally, that, and then they end up spending it locally. I have a Buy Maryland plan, giving them a 20% deduction on anything $100 or more of purchases made within Maryland. When you inject money into the economy in the springtime, it works. That's when housing, closing costs, you know, there's more buying of homes, cars, and different things, and you inject that in, and then that actually increases as you go into the last three months of the year, which is your, your best quarter in retail. So this, is, this can be done just from the waste I've already seen on hand. Now, in my corporate income tax cut, if you look at the plan, I'm talking about decreasing it. What I've actually said in my plan you know, might have to be readjusted. I talk about 2% in 2015 and a quarter point the next couple of years. It might have to be readjusted because the write down right now uh, that we're about to see, uh, the controller has spoken of, I, we've also seen this, I've also sensed it in my own business and out there when I speak to the other businesses, there's going to be another write down in, in the money. We're going to have more than just a $400 million deficit. I've asked people in my campaign, don't quote the $400 million the controller's talking about because it's going to be more. Uh, we have to readjust what that is. So I might just do a quarter point each year. Uh, for five years or so to get it down there. But you see, this will stop the bleeding of businesses leaving because they see help is coming. Things will be getting better. It can help us get businesses to locate here because they'll say, okay, they're not quite as low as Virginia, but you know what? They're on the road to get there. And I believe we can do that, and that'll help stop that bleeding. We've lost 7,500 businesses in this state over the last five years. And uh, that's going just from Department of Business, Economic Development, even under the governor's own stats. And uh, so that's a pretty secure figure. And uh, we've got to stop that bleeding. You can't shrink the private sector and, and, and grow the public sector or have money for these programs. I'm a Republican who believes there is a there, you know, government has an important role with the safety net and all the things that we have. Uh, and I, I think we can get there. The other thing I talk about doing another place is to lower uh, for instance, on, on uh, manufacturing, the equipment tax, which is huge, the equipment is a big thing in manufacturing. The equipment tax in Maryland is ranked 50th of all the states, and it is four times higher than the national average. That's how bad it is. So we've lost manufacturing in this state. Now, I believe we can bring it back. If I were to cut that tax in half, it puts us right into the middle of the pack. But I think I want to go a little lower than that and slowly remove that. And I believe that's, that'll be more than made up from the payroll taxes of the increased jobs you will have in manufacturing. We are really a place that they want to locate. You know, we, we were number one in tomato canning of the whole United States. It was the Eastern Shore, and there were little box buildings in some of these small crossroad towns. They're all empty. You'll see this little box. You'll see a little church steeple. You'll see a few houses, a little general store you know, that's barely stocked, but there would be a little box building and it had 40 employees, 120 employees. We had a lot of manufacturing be done even in these crossroad towns. You look at Hagerstown, it's empty. We can save all those in Washington County, but you know, we did some incentives, or their county did, to try to help them there. Um, but I see what's happened within these cities uh, in Cumberland and Hagerstown and Salisbury and Cambridge, and we need to bring manufacturing back, but especially Baltimore City is ripe for it. We need to have an answer, a strong portfolio across the board uh, for entry-level, mid-level jobs. It isn't all about cybersecurity and tech. 
And tech also has manufacturing that we can attract too with this, this cut I'm talking about. So making us more business friendly, getting less manufacturing jobs, having manufacturing jobs leaving is worse than trying to create an incentive for them to say this, this is a good location for them. Now, import-export jobs, we're expanding the harbor. The state really is not doing anything to increase import-export business. That's again, entry-level, mid-level jobs, holding areas and things like that. We can do that in this state. That helps a big part of the portfolio that this government has hurt. So it is an area government can affect directly and so I will be doing that. So that's more payroll taxes. When I talk about increasing a tax base, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so uh, as far as the tax cut programs, they're target areas on specific things. It's not a one blanket for the whole state. I talk about manufacturing, import, export businesses. I talk about how to get uh, help other areas of the state and to get those mid-level and smaller manufacturing firms back. Uh, those eastern shore towns, the property values are less, the, so your property tax is lower, uh, cost of living is lower, you can attract jobs to those areas. They're suffering in the rural areas and you know, we're forgetting about them and there's ways to get those back.